today and oat mix, I'm going to do something that was requested a long time ago. In fact, I've wanted to do it since I was on DIY Prop Shop. I'm going to make Stonehenge from Spinal Tap. Stonehenge beneath the haunted moon for fear that daybreak might come too soon. I love the movie Spinal Tap, and if you haven't seen it yet, Spinal Tap is a spoof about a filmmaker who's making a documentary about a once famous, now almost forgotten, British heavy metal band returning to the United States after 17 years for a concert tour. At one point in the movie, the band wanted a giant Stonehenge to use as an onstage prop, but a mistake with the measurements got them something a little different. Consider, consider it done. Now, of course, the only real easy way to do this, aside from mining large pieces of stone, which I'm not going to do, is to make it out of styrofoam. Now, the simple pieces of styrofoam that I know of that I can get a hold of are from Home Depot, and for the most part, those sheets have plastic on the sides. There's name on one side and a reflective silver on the other side. You'd actually have to cut it, peel all the plastic off, glue it together in layers, and then you can start cutting it into an 18-inch tall Stonehenge. But I found something that'll work. Walmart to the rescue. This is an archery target. You can tell it's a target because you can shoot bears in the butt. But what it is, it's a plastic wrapped piece of foam. After unwrapping the archery target, I get a styrofoam block that's 10 inches wide by 24 inches square. So, how am I gonna cut it? I could just use a basic wood saw, you know, your classic Warner Brothers saw. That'll do just fine, provided you have a decent saw, but it makes a heck of a mess. Instead, I'm gonna use a hot wire cutting tool with nichrome wire and this assorted box of wire I got from Amazon. This is something I acquired when I moved into the shop, but the idea is pretty sound. All it is, it's a bow of wood and it has a spring along the top to keep tension along the wire down here. It's a little complicated, but it was built to do really large objects. I don't expect you to do really large objects. If you wanted to, you can uh, easily just make one through any kind of a piece of wood that you want to bend around. And if you're insane, you can just run one through a hacksaw. But honestly, that doesn't seem that safe. It works, but it doesn't seem that safe. I mark out my lines for 18 inch by 10 inch blocks. I don't need them to be super accurate because I'm going to be cutting this by hand. And the top lintel stone will be thinner. This is my variable power source. Now originally this came from a theater group. This was used as a power dimmer for the large stage lights. Something I happen to have. Now this beast is overkill. This is way more power than I need. I'm barely going to use more than 10% of the dial but I've got it and I know it works. So don't be scared. Just, just look up what you need. If you want to use nichrome wire, I'm sure you can get one off of Amazon. It's gonna be a lot smaller and, and a lot more safe to use at home. I wear a vapor mask as the fumes emitted from melting styrofoam is very toxic. Nichrome wire is simple. It sits in line as part of a wired circuit, like a light bulb. Just plug it in and dial up the power. But be sure not to run it too hot because you can melt the wire. It heats up almost instantly and you can start cutting. Since I'm going for an organic shape, I don't mind some of the wobbly cuts that I'm getting. You can set up cutting guides with wood or metal bars if you want a really straight cut. As I cut the pieces, I try to get the basic shape that I want, which is not correct to the real Stonehenge, but it looks more cartoony. Kind of like the napkin drawing Nigel did in the movie. I carve each leg or sarsen slightly for that cartoon look. I shape the lintel with that hacksaw cutter that I put together. I let this wire run a little too hot. It never broke, but it really shouldn't glow this much. And the resistance from the nichrome wire heated up the extension cord. And by the time I was done, the insulation on the extension cord was starting to bubble and melt. I measure the thickness of my lintel so I can figure out how much I need to cut down on the sarsens. I want this to be as close to 18 inches tall as I can and I want the blocks to sit flat without any wobble. I spend a little time fine tuning the foam shapes. More cutting now is less sanding later, and this part is a lot more fun. 
I cut the corners down so they're not square, and then I can start sanding them. I'm just using a medium grit sanding sponge to remove the lines left from the hot wire and to get the block a little smoother. I stop and use my shop vac between each piece so the styro mess doesn't get out of control. I sand down all three parts so they'll have the same look, and then I check the fit. No, oh, nailed it, 18. Really? Sweet. Ha, right on. That was about an hour. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of filler and I'm gonna fill in these two big holes because those are a little too big. And then I'm gonna paint the whole thing with primer. I just fill the holes with spackle and give it a chance to set. I paint each piece with a gray primer paint. This one is a latex-based house primer. I can't use a spray paint primer because that stuff will melt styrofoam. And I paint each piece with two coats because I want to make sure everything is fully covered because I'm going to use a spray stone texture next and any little hole will melt into a bigger problem. So I've got the basic painting done and originally I thought this is all I was going to have to do. But looking at it, just the gray and the stone texture isn't enough. This really, there, there isn't enough here. I think this is all there is in the movie. It doesn't look like it's that detailed, but I wanna do a little more. So I'm gonna mix up some black acrylic paint with water and run through my touch-up gun and go ahead and put some shadows onto this thing. I mix some acrylic paint and water. <laughs> this was actually too much water. And I use my old touch-up paint gun. The air compressor I have is not quite big enough to run this gun, but I made it work. I just had to stop and wait for the air tank to fill back up all the time. Oh, a. All I'm really trying to do is create deeper shadows than what is really there. Just like painting a miniature for wargaming. It takes a couple of coats to get it dark enough, and the paint dries lighter than it looks when it's wet. I paint around the tops and around the base, and with the lintel, I coat the entire underside. I also add some extra lines and marks on the flat sides for a little more color. All right, there we go. Now I've got my shadows put on it, and I went back again and just lightly dusted the whole thing with the same stone texture to kind of, you know, make it look a little less plastic. Uh, the, the shadows were a little too harsh. Now they're, they're much better. I'm pretty happy with this. What I'm gonna do now is get the top to sit slightly better, and then some Gorilla Glue. I use my razor knife and trim the tops of each sarsen to get the lintel to sit close and, of course, to not wobble. To glue them all together, I use a good coat of Gorilla Glue. I set the lintel and place a sandbag on top because this glue will foam slightly when it sets. Yeah, even my glue was foam. I let Stonehenge sit with the sandbag on it overnight so the glue can fully cure. My completed Stonehenge from Spinal Tap, made to the exact dimensions that's on the napkin. Now, if you were a little more industrious, you could coat this thing with stucco, you know, just like what's on the side of your house, and then you could leave it outside in the garden. Or if you were really crazy industrious, you could make one that was nine meters tall, it's about 30 feet, and carve it from stone. But this guy, <laughs> I use styrofoam because this is how Odin makes. Stonehenge, where the virgins lie in the prayers. This also came with a shop. This was uh, originally used as a, uh, 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 <clears throat> I want to thank Douglas Goldstein, Adam Hazel, and all of my Patreon supporters. You rock stars really do help this channel. If you like this video, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.